How's it going everyone? Today I had a pretty interesting topic I wanted to discuss with you guys. As with every year, Rapzilla holds an award show, or more like an award blog, where different projects can receive different awards. There's a ton of different categories, and each category has several nominees, but what happens from there, everything is left up to the voter. What wins and what doesn't. Rapzilla's 2016 awards faced especially tough competition, particularly in the free category. Aaron Cole's work walked away with the free project award, as it got the most votes. However, I'm not sure I think it should have won. It's only got six songs and it really feels like an EP, which definitely counts as a free project, but it's just that other artists that year brought way more to the table in my opinion. Things change, As We Walk Into Forever, Hope Is Dope, Out Of The Blue, Slow And Steady, all of these were amazing projects. They were incredible. They deserved to get the award. On top of that, they felt more full than Aaron Cole's project. However, today I only want to talk about Slow And Steady. I don't think many people would disagree that it was a good album, however, I want to take it a step further. Was Slow and Steady a classic? Keep in mind that there's no real way to decide what a classic is and isn't. This will be going by my criteria, so if you disagree with me throughout the video, leave a comment and let's talk about it. Let's start off with cultural impact. Street Hymns is no doubt impacting battle rap, but battle rap is a different story. Besides, with the insane amount of CHH out there now, Street isn't really doing anything new in the sense of talking about God, Jesus, and even the Holy Spirit in his music. However, let's flip the lens. Consider Street's reputation as a battle rapper. If you don't know, I'll clue you in. Street has an incredibly solid reputation as a battle rapper for several reasons, some of those reasons being that he manages to beat other battle rappers without verbally attacking them, or cursing, or using gun bars, and in general he doesn't threaten violence against his opponents. Give them a beat and most will struggle, there's simply too much of a difference between battle rapping and rhythmically rapping to a beat. They struggle to fit all the stuff they want to say into the much quicker pace of a rap song, so it usually never comes out right. I think it's fair to say then that the general consensus on Street was, well, he's a good rapper, for a battle rapper. If you look at his music before Slow and Steady, you'll see what I mean. There's some stuff that stands out, but for the most part, it's the realm of a lyricist, minimalistic beats and little ambience so that his bars can hit you at full force. It wasn't bad music, but it definitely made people comfortable with the idea that Street is better off as a battle rapper. Gone were the days of minimalistic beats and minimal ambience. Street's sound in terms of relevance was all over the place with Slow and Steady. The old Street was still there, but now he had songs that were really light on lyrics and instead focused on creating an atmosphere or a vibe. He didn't dumb his music down, however. He simply opted to create an auditory experience with this album. With Street's reputation in mind, I doubt anyone besides the people who knew him well and worked with him saw this coming. This project came out of nowhere because of how drastic a change it signified for his music. He even references this whole notion in one of his songs from the album, so don't think I'm just making all of this up. People were definitely not ready for Street to evolve from a lyricist to a multifaceted musical artist. When you consider all of this, I'd personally say that this counts as a cultural impact. Many albums don't do much to an artist's image. They simply reaffirm it, worsen it, or strengthen it a bit. Slow and Steady stood in complete opposition to Street's image as a battle rapper who can make good music for a battle rapper. He's no longer Street Hymns the battle rapper that makes music. He's Street Hymns the artist. It's not just myself who feels this way either, as other artists started featuring Street more often, notably after Slow and Steady came out. CHH itself, maybe without even realizing, started to more heavily acknowledge Street's presence as an artist rather than a battle rapper. However, in spite of this, it hasn't even been a full two years since the project came out. There's no telling how the public at large really felt about this album. It was nominated for 2016's Best Free Project, but didn't win, and overall I would say its full implications haven't been felt yet. True classics appreciate and value over time, so you could say it's way too early to be calling it a classic. Now let's talk about the sound and length of Slow and Steady. It's surely one of the longer albums out there consisting of 21 tracks. Don't worry though, it's not 21 songs, it's 21 chapters of a story, and about 7 of those chapters are less than a minute long, called scenes, mostly filling you in on the story. One of the biggest things that can make or break a potential classic is being too long or short. I don't mean too long in the sense of having too many tracks, but too long in the sense of filler. Many albums have that one song, maybe two or three, where you're like, 
This song is boring, I always skip it when it comes on. In my opinion, Slow and Steady doesn't have that. You can say the scenes are skippable, but they aren't songs to begin with, and they're so short that they shouldn't be counted as filler. True Filler tries to pad out an album with full songs that simply aren't very notable, so these scenes don't fall into that category. No matter how much I listen to this album, I can't find a single song that doesn't warrant a full listen. If you want the old street hymns, listen to songs like Plan B, We Here, and Next Man. If you want an experimental side, songs like Slow and Steady, Thinking Cap, and Bullets Are Nameless showcase that. If you want to hear some plain bangers, it's got songs like Heat of the Moment, Ballin', and Cheat Code. This album is absurdly well balanced. You can really tell that Street actually put quite a bit of thought into what song goes where. The result is that this project feels like a storybook. It's an experience, and every time you turn the page by putting on a new song, he throws something refreshing and mood shifting at you. The album never holds one atmosphere for too long. It's constantly looking to change at just the right moment to prevent the project from feeling monotone or dual. So from a perspective of sound and length, this album holds its ground formidably. It's long, but not too long, and even now when I listen to it a year later, the whole thing sounds fresh. However, I do want to emphasize that year again. Has it aged well? It's simply impossible to say because of how little time has passed in terms of an album. It hasn't had enough time to show how well it's holding up against newer sounds, so here we come yet again to the fact that very little time has passed since it dropped. So let's look at another aspect. Never mind how the album compares to other albums, what about the album itself? Does it make sense as a concept? as a story, or is it just a compilation of several songs? I'm glad to say that, as I've mentioned before, the album is well paced and balanced. However, that actually plays into the entire theme of the album, the story it tells, that timeless tale of the tortoise and the hare. There's quite a bit of structure going on here, so let's quickly run through what I see as the overarching story here. Each part of the story is divided up between the seven scenes throughout the album. Slow and Steady and Texas come before the first scene. Story-wise, these songs feel like the introduction. After all, any good story wants to introduce you to the main character at first and give you a sense of who they are. From this introduction we can see that Street lives by the model slow and steady and that he loves Texas but understands that it isn't perfect. After scene one, Street's way of life has been disturbed by his acquaintance, the hare. He becomes more pensive on the next two songs as he seems to be battling some doubts about the path he's chosen and the hate coming his way. Scene two comes and the hare makes a big mistake. He pushes Street too far and the bet is on. In a month's time they will race in order to see who's really going about life the wrong way. In the next three songs, Street remains true to his beliefs. He knows that he's weak, so he relies on God to give him the strength. He will continue to be a role model and speak the truth as a beacon of light. However, he doesn't let it go to his head, as he's no better than the man beside him. He doesn't forget that he needs to show love to everyone, small or mighty in their appearance. Scene 3 passes and now Street is ready to put his beliefs into practice, to push himself in order to stand up to his opposition, the hare. He spends the next two songs in a solemn session of training and speaking truth into those around him. Scene 4 comes in the race has started. Street becomes focused on this one song, and I think it's great that even though the song is called Heat of the Moment, it's a slower banger. Street is truly sticking to his model of slow and steady, showing the power of consistency and presentation. Then we have scene 5, with the hare choosing to take a nap. This could be seen as Street's opponent sleeping on him, not taking him seriously enough to be seen as a threat. The next two songs feel like Street continuing his steady pace and not giving up on himself. While the opposition is fooling around, Street is making his presence known and passing them all up, all while traveling at a patient and consistent pace. He's not concerned with the opposition, he's concerned with staying true to the method. Here's scene 6, and the tide has been drastically turned. The hare got too careless, and now Street is the one leading. The crowd is cheering for him, the energy is insane, Street's patience and hard work is starting to pay off. If this is the case, why is the following song, Plan B, so calm and thoughtful? Where's the celebration? This is where the great twist comes. In the last scene, Street has nothing to say about winning, no gloating. The hare is dumbfounded that he lost, and Street simply tells him that hard work and perseverance always pay off. Street knew that he would win all along, and you would think that's the end of the story. Except, Cheat Code is what ends the album, and what an ending it is. The tables become completely turned as Street is no longer at the disadvantage by being slow. He's now on the offensive. He has the cheat code, the power, the glow. Where did all this aggressiveness come from? It was there all along. Street has bigger fish to fry than the hare. It's not about winning a race for him or being first. It's about changing an industry, completing the mission that God gave him. When it comes to a race, Street might seem slow and unable to keep up. 
When it comes to changing the world around him and making an impact on his community and culture, he's an unstoppable rocket that's about to take off. It's not the deepest story out there, but it's an incredibly well-paced and organic retelling of the tortoise and the hare. What makes it great is the revealing at the end that it was never really about winning a race, and that Street's focus and aim is much more ambitious. It's a story through and through, with a twist at the end that suddenly broadens the entire scope of the album. Again, not the deepest story, but it's one of the most well-built and thoroughly organized stories I've seen in a hip-hop album. Every time I listen to the album I have to start from the beginning as otherwise I feel like I'm skipping pages in one of my favorite books. I don't know if Street Hymns plans on making another album, but I'd be really impressed to see him make something more full and complete than this. With all of this in mind between the unique and quality production, the auditorial experience, and the story-like structure and probable cultural impact, I would say that Slow and Steady is absolutely a classic. It doesn't matter to me if you want to say in hip-hop as a whole or in CHH. This album to me is a classic regardless of what box you could possibly put it in. I'm very excited to see how this album will age and I think it has absolutely changed hip-hop's impression of street hymns. There's no talking down on him now as to just being a battle rapper. He's an extremely versatile and charismatic artist that can handle multiple sounds at once and still make it feel like a cohesive, story-driven project. Well, what do you guys think? Is Slow and Steady a classic? Is it too early to decide? Or was it just not as good as I'm making it out to be? Let me know in the comments below and let me know if you guys would like to see more videos like this one. Until next time, peace out. If you need that sauce, you can in my life. I do not sleep, I don't get tired. Drop south, dance, not a mouth wide. Left, wrist or right, wrist I can't decide. Yeah, there's only room for the two. Yeah, two in the cool. Yeah.